Welcome everybody to another episode of the Twisted Pair. My name is Graybeard. My name is Ash Red, and our guest is Miss Cynthia Gonzalez. And welcome, welcome, welcome to the Twisted Pair. Thank you. Thank you for the invite. I am happy to be here with you guys. I, I tell you what, I I have been following your account on Instagram for a while now. And I came across your account on one of your pairings. And that's what really got me in, intrigued is, is I saw one of your pairings and then just, you know, started paying attention to, to your level of influence that you have in the cigar community. And I, I want to say that it is an honor for you to come on our show I'm almost kind of fanboying it, but what I what I told Red that I was like, I want you to go out to the sister of the leaf because Cynthia is going to be there, and I want you to talk to her so that she can get on our show. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. And and unfortunately, we didn't get to speak as much as I would have wanted or liked to. Um, you know, you, little chats here and there with everybody back and forth, you know, things like that. That's what happens on, on events. But uh, it was quite uh, lovely. It was nice. It was great uh, to see everybody over there um, in Texas. Well, not whole entire state of Texas, of course. Right. <laughs> But, um, you know, it's very, very well appreciated that uh, the ones that were able to come, they, they made, you know, the effort to come because I'm fully aware the traffic is crazy, crazy, yeah. crazy, crazy, especially at, at that time of the hour and so forth. But um, we had a great time. It was nice. And, and, it, and it was the first... Um, gathering in person that the platform of Soto Global Movement uh, was, you know, rolling out. So um, we're going to be getting, uh, you know, uh, better, but not in like in a negative way it, that it not, didn't go well. It's just right, to right. make, to bring more things like, you know what, this work, and I think we could do this better in this area. And then the next one, um, and so forth, like everything else, right? So, yeah. Well, and here, here is my thing: is like you know, and I'm not sure. It just from from my experience, and you know how I go. I normally do not go to lounges by myself. I normally take uh, a fellow, like I take Graybeard, or I take some of my other cigar buddies, and I, like there, I actually felt. And I don't want to say I don't ever not feel safe going to cigar lounges, but I prefer to go, um, I don't want to say entourage because that sounds like so negative, but I prefer to go with somebody um, than go by myself. And this one was like, I was like at peace because I knew the Sister of the Leaf mo you know, movement is all about, you know, getting women together, getting that announcement that women do smoke cigars. We are a part of this industry. And I knew it was going to be a safe and respectful place. So I didn't have to worry about that. So um, I was really, as a woman, um, I was really excited to see that y'all are having these different events all across the United States. And I know it, even around the world is what it was the goal. So um, for me, it was really nice and very enjoyable. So that's yeah. good. That's awesome. And that's exactly, the, like you went very well said, that's the purpose of, of launching or rolling out these type of events. Um, and it's interesting that you, you high pointed, you highlighted that, um, that you were like, you know what, Let, let's give it a try. I am, I'm not, I'm gonna do this new thing. I'm gonna go by myself and try it out to give a good, give myself the opportunity and them to see if this really actually works. Mm -hmm. And it was great. It was good. And, and that's um, what I also do here in Puerto Rico with uh, Mujeres y Humos, Soto Puerto Rico. 
that was the, the you know, one of the reasons mainly that I rolled out that, that platform here in Puerto Rico. So when I met uh, Anastasia, well, when I came across with her platform and mm -hmm. saw what it was all about, I was like, wow, it's exactly what I'm, uh, I, this is what I'm doing over here. So we started talking and having video calls and, you know, it, now we're here. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, a, li a little bit, yeah, two years. Oh my gosh, two years wow. later. So, yeah. so I, I, I really want to get into get into the details on all of this, you know, because I, you know, being a man in this industry, I see how my sisters are treated, you know, and it is changing, but I still, but I still see it, and I, I want to see that change, and so I want to see to do everything I can. But let's take a step back. I know we, we just jumped into it. it. <laughs> we are the twisted pair. And what we specialize is on teaching people how to pair cigars and taking that on to the next level. So we break things down to, we break it down to the, the, the blend of the cigar, the, the blend and the profile of the drink and marry up those flavors. And you presented with us a challenge with a drink that neither of us have had until tonight. And I'm so excited about it. So we're kind of coming at this, this is what we call a blind pairing, where we don't really know how it's going to go. So, you know, it's, hey, this is what this is all about. So we, we always start off by going around the room and, and, and what we're all pairing. So I'm going to start off with our guest of honor. Well, um, I had shared previously, right, uh, before the show, with you guys that I was going to do a lychee martini. Mm -hmm. And so there is a little change and I'm still going to, I'm still doing the martini. Okay. But I went to get more of the lychee and uh, they ran out of, at my nearest store. So I did a pear martini. Oh, <laughs> See, now I'm, even, I'm, I'm intrigued there too. Yes. And, um, but uh, I came up with a, with a pair. There's several recipes about pear, but instinctively, I mean, I'm not saying that pear and lychee are exactly the same or anything like that, but um, they have like the similar profile where they're not extremely sweet because lychee is not a sweet fruit um and it's not tart fruit either either it, it, it's 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 a very um uh, amicable mm -hmm. uh, a uh, perfect way to say it to your palate yeah. it it doesn't overpower anything it's not yeah. overly sweet not tart nor nothing it's just right there in the middle and pears for me have that same type of quality to it. Um, and so I said, you know what? Let me do a pear martini. So that's what I did. Um, so just by looking at it, if I was to say, oh, this is a lychee martini, then physically you got, oh, okay, yeah, great. It's a lychee martini, it has the same exact color. But so, no. So here's, here's the color. So I've I've got the I've got the leech. Now, now before before I or, or Red get into it, what what are you smoking with it? What are what cigar are you? So the cigar I, I was, I, you know what I, I was I was gonna tell Ash. Oh, I'm gonna tell you what cigar what cigar, and I was, you know, like oh my gosh, why am I gonna smoke? Why am I gonna smoke like da Cynthia? I mean, smoke your own cigar. <laughs> so I'm going to smoke uh, the cigar that Mujeres y Humos has, which is a limited run. Uh, it's a collaboration that we have with Privada Cigar Club. So here she is. And I saw that on your post, like on your story. I think it was that you did it. Uh, and I was like, oh my gosh, that's so awesome. And I'm like, Man, I don't have it in time for the show. <laughs> uh, 
so so we 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 need to do a cigar trade. We'll we'll we'll, we'll trade you one of one of our leaf and grain L and Gs. Yeah, right. Definitely, we'll do a swap. Yes. So, uh, this is a five by fifty robusto. Uh, it has a closed foot, and the wrapper is San Andres, uh, San Andres, a Mexican San Andres. Mm -hmm. I don't have any more of the descriptions when it comes to the tobacco. This, like I said, is a collaboration with Privada Cigar Club. Privada Cigar Club rolled out a few months ago. Uh, um, a regional group um, project, mm -hmm. if, we, if you may want to call it like that, where different cigar clubs, the scores, they can, if they want to, if they want to, or they're interested, have their own cigar, uh, go through the process of selecting a cigar for your members. And when that rolled out, I was like, wow, that's great, because I already have the bands for it. Oh, perfect. Yeah, I already had them since last year. Um, and I hold off on that project. Like, well, this will be great. I spoke with a few of the more, the more active members of Sotol, of the Mujeres y Humos. And so I, I filled out everything, right? And, and requested the, the samples. And each one smoked the samples. And we were to do it on our own, privately, write down, you know, do a mini review about it, and then share how was the smoke, and then move on to the next one. And we'll swap pictures, and sometimes we'll video call each other. What do you think about it? Oh, I'm smoking, oh my God, this, and like, so forth. And so we came out with this one. We decided on this one. We agreed on this one. Um, so, they, it, it, these are like Privada Cigar Club does a lot of collabs with different brands out there. Uh, Blackbird is one of them. Mm -hmm. And this happens to be one of, one of the Blackbirds that they have made for Privada Cigar Club. So that's the one that we ended up choosing. We didn't know the description or who was made by or anything until we have made our selection. After that, then they provided it as much as information as they were willing to share. So that's <laughs> the most information. And then you don't know how many amount there is available after the fact. So mm -hmm. it, it is a limited run. One, it's, it's done, it's done, right? It's, it's, it's um, so uh, it's been awesome. Um, it, there's a consistent ordering, so it's nice. It's not I'm gonna, we're going to become rich overnight or nothing like that, <laughs> but it, it's fun. It, it's very fun. Yeah. To pass and, and that's on. what it's about. Yeah, and enjoy that process with your own members. And also it goes to, to show that anything is possible. We mm -hmm. can all work together. There's room for everybody. We don't have to like, hover and take all oh, this is mine and this. no share share it's all about the experience right Absolutely. and exactly and not everybody's gonna participate for different reasons mm -hmm. uh, and those that do will do um mm -hmm. and it's all about the process and the fun and the enjoyment of it it's create it, it fosters community yeah, it fosters the community. It really and, does. It does. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so that's why I'm smoking. So, so like, I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. Oh, okay. So, um, I have selected the Viaje uh, right there, and this one is Hang Time. And um, yeah, I was like, did I say it right? I don't have my glasses on. Yeah, uh, hang did. Time. So, um, this one is. Um, if y'all have, have, we've smoked it one other, I think we've smoked it one other time or we've talked about it. We've talked this about one, it. Yeah, we've talked about it. This reminds me of, you know, and I'm thinking it's Honduras uh, rapper is, is what I'm going to, or what I'm, or Dominican. I'm going to say, I'm going to say more than the Honduras. Um, and the reason that uh, it's got that fresh farm taste to it, but it's got a little bit of sweetness. So I, I think it's going to be like, as you were saying, the uh, Lice is, 
I, if I had to describe it, it'd be like a peach and a pear got married and they had a baby. And that's kind of like what this is. So I wanted something that would go, you know, be able to like marry it well. But I think as the cigar gets more, it's got more of a kick to it. So um, I'm interested to see when it comes to that. So I think it's going to be complementary and contrast at the same time. Uh, so that will be interesting. And it is a close foot. So great minds are thinking alike with the size and the close foot tonight. <laughs> well, yeah. well mine, mine's a Toro. And I went with the My Father, uh, La, La and, and Tigadad. So this, this one is a... Um, this is a Ecuadorian Habano Oscuro wrapper with Nicaraguan long fillers. And so I went with the Ecuadorian to kind of, so that the, the tropical fruit notes, that's the subtle notes of Ecuadorian would marry up with the strawberry and the pear notes of, of, the, of the liche. Mm -hmm. But you intrigued me when you said, go with the contrast pairing and so that's why I went with this one for a kind of a, a complimentary with the fruit notes, but the con but the contrast with with the, the Nicaraguan. So it's going to have a bit more of the black pepper in the background of it. It's going to have a bit more of a um, there's I'm going to get a little bit of earthy notes and coffee notes throughout it as well. And so it's going to be interesting how that pairs. I'm on, my only concern is, is that this is a medium full to full bold cigar. Now, now we, we use the word bold because we hate body. Body describes smoke, strength describes the amount of acidity and levels of nicotine in it. So we, we describe a cigar as being intensity or boldness. So I'm hoping that the cigar doesn't overpower it. That that's my only concern, because this is a th this is a it's a I almost want to say it's a delicate drink. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, we have to take into account that um, the the lychee in itself, right? But then you you had the vodka. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, obviously the vodka I mean if it's grain potato uh, mm -hmm. whatever you want to make the vodka out of it, it, it's, it's just not a uh, one that is going to have a whole notes to like a tobacco of course not like right. rum or bourbon or whatever right. so right there automatically it's a contrast it's what we add okay. to it to make that cocktail to make it more agreeable, a uh, pleasant, mm -hmm. right? And a lot of cocktails, um, not all of them, but a lot of cocktails, they will have a citrus. They will have lime or lemon. Mm -hmm. Right there, yes. that has another contrast. Yep. But right. then you add the simple syrup, or if it's a flavored simple syrup, whatever you want to enhance, right? So the, the beauty about crafting a cocktail mm -hmm. is that you decide the ratios mm -hmm. that you want that cocktail so it can fit to your palate and what is it that you are going to be smoking with, right? Mm -hmm. There's people it, that they, they, they don't like sweets. They can mm -hmm. tolerate a little bit. And they perform more of, of the tartness or what have you. So in a, in a cocktail like we're going to have tonight, a lychee, then they will increase the ratio for the lemon juice or vice mm -hmm. versa. Instead of like a um, an ounce a simple syrup to give it just, that will do maybe uh, a half an ounce or three quarts or what have you. Or so, like or like what yeah. you said with with the with the how they make their simple syrup, and so so I made I made my simple syrup with a with a raw sugar cane. Ah, so, yes. So that that sugar, as you know, is a little bit more bold than mm -hmm. than a standard. More flavor. Yeah. So yeah. It's, and, and we normally when when we're teaching about pairing with cocktails, we talk we tell our viewers to do what we call a deconstruction pairing. Mm -hmm. 
So you pair the thirds of a cigar to the different components of the cocktail. But where this one is challenging is it's a vodka and it's not a, generally it's not a sipping vodka that has notes to it. So it's a noteless, it's a pure vodka. So now you've got less that you're gonna deconstruct to. So I've got yeah. sweet and, and I've got sweet and citrus and sweet. Mm -hmm. Now also um, as all the other spirits, every spirit, they're not all the same, right? So in this case, when we're talking about vodka, it depends on vodka that you're choosing to use mm -hmm. your martini. So for me, I chose a Reika, Reika or Reika, Reika, uh, vodka, Reika vodka is an, it's a vodka made in Iceland. Ooh. And its water is glacier water. It's, and it's um, a good one. I've had that yeah. one before. <laughs> it's an extra smooth vodka. It even has some some natural, some kind of sweetness to it, actually, yes. which is yeah. very surprising. Yeah, it, it's not your your vodka that you would. Yeah, like a. Uh, like a gray goose or an absolute or anything. No, this is extremely, extremely smooth. Um, and one of the reasons is because of the water that they're using and the process of distillation. So um, I use that vodka purposely to make my lychee martinis, or in this case, a pear martini, because it makes it very, very uh, smooth and, and, and naturally sweet, but not overly sweet. Mm -hmm. So it's not going to be a battle with the cigar. You know, and right. I don't need them to get married, but right. I need to behave. Yeah. And, and <laughs> Yes, I yeah, like, get along. I like, yeah, and, and I and I like that. I like how you said that. And you bring up such a good point because like I think that, you know, a lot of times we focus on the cigar and we don't focus on the drink. And we've talked about that on our shows. We don't focus and then sometimes we don't really put the thought or and you know, and I've been guilty of it too. But it's like you like I did dripping spring uh vodka, which is from Texas, and it, it is a as you say, like a smoother, it's not that harsh. Um, normally I drink Neff, which is a sipping vodka. And it was made to with cigars. That was like one of the purpose. And it's uh, a pot still, and you know, of how they do that vodka. So my thing was like, my kids drank all my vodka. And I discovered that late last night. And I was not a happy mother to discover I only had like totally a three ounces of vodka left so um that's like one thing is like you need to be that's why bartenders ask you what do you what which vodka do you want do you want the, or which tequila do you want or which bourbon do you want mm -hmm. is because some of them have the different acidity they have the different you know uh you know bite to it it, it you've got to really look at the profile of what you're going to drink and smoke as what we do and it's important that you do that. And um, I think that sometimes it's that we just don't really put the thought behind it. And that's what we're trying to change. And I love the fact that you even were talking about like the different fruits, the diff different simple syrup. Now, yeah. here's one thing that I was sitting here thinking is I love to make simple syrups. It's been one of my things that I did. And I'm almost like, if you've ever had a jalapeno simple syrup, it's got that sweetness, but it also has a bite to it, but it blends really well with like the tropical fruit, like mangoes. And, and I'm sitting here thinking like, I wonder what a little bit of a jalapeno simple syrup would be like in this drink. Sure. Why not? Just try it out. Right. Yeah, you and then have you the flavor of the jalapeno, fruit. just a little bit of that bite. Yeah. Um, why not? I mean, and, and, and that's the beauty of credit cocktails. There's, there's not 
nothing that you cannot do. There's nothing you cannot do. Um, oh, yeah, we, we've we've tried some. I, I came up with one. I, I I had such a convoluted name to it. I I don't even remember what I called it. But it was a it was a take on the whiskey sour. And mm -hmm. um and a tequila and a tequila sunrise. But instead instead of tequila, I'm I'm using a rum. I'm, no, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I'm using I'm using a rye. So, mm -hmm. so I I used I used rye, and then uh, Campari and Cantro, and um, uh, sweet and sour or or sweet and sour mm -hmm. juice, and then a. Uh, a little bit of a couple of dashes of of, of uh, aromatic bitters, and then a drop of liquid smoke. In there. Wow, quite complex. Oh, it was, and, and we and we did a pairing. I did a pairing with it. So our, our challenge that to do a a pairing with a cocktail, and and I can make cocktails. I can. I can knock the standard cocktails out of the world. Coming up with my own is a little bit more of a challenge. I, I, I leave that. I leave that to Red. And it's it's a fun thing to do to experiment with it. And it's just like, and once you find like you know, a cigar that you want to, where the cigar will behave with the drink. I love how you said that. That it will behave. It doesn't necessarily have to vary. But you want it to behave to where you can pick up the notes of the con, you know, the different profiles, because yeah. that's the beauty. That's the beauty of this. And one thing that uh, I loved, and and I'm gonna kind of, uh, if I remember correctly, was that was your first time at the the Sister of the Leaf movement when we went to when we had the, uh, the event was your first time to have a white Russian. Is that correct? I've had my uh, Russians before. I've, I even made them myself. Okay. Uh, but I haven't had it. Wow. And I, I think the last time I made a white Russian was in 2020 during the pandemic when I was still in Dallas before I moved back to Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. And it was the last time I did a, a, a white Russian. Actually, it was... Um, um, well, there's this product, let me find it to, because I don't remember now the name of it, but um, they have these products like uh, cold brew and, and gold mm -hmm. milk and yeah. with, that has turmeric and coconut mm -hmm. milk and what, there's different, yeah. it's a brand that you find in Whole Foods. Yeah. And I, I had seen the gold milk and I've always heard about it, you know, so I made a cocktail with it using some mezcal and a bunch of other stuff. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I love I put pictures, posted on, on YouTube, um, on Instagram, and I tagged the company. They loved it. So they reached out to me, we want to interview you. All the, these cocktails are so fun. Um, let's send you samples. They sent me a whole box, a bunch of different wow. So one of them had the cold brew. So I made right white Russian with it. I did a, 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 a coffee a martini and mm -hmm. you know different cocktail variations with that same product that they have with different distilled spirit and so forth. So that was fun. Um, yeah. So since then, I haven't had a, a white Russian. So I'm like, when I saw that, I, oh my gosh, I look so yummy. I haven't had that in a minute. Oh my gosh, let me have one. Yes, and, and a lot of people, we, we were talking about this last week on the show, that some people are scared to pair cigars with milk. Um, and when you make your white Russian, you're going to have like a milk-based thing. And some of my favorite pairings, and it doesn't matter what cigar I've had, I've had, you know, like, you know, very cigars that have been very intense and very bold. And whenever I've done a white Russian with it, it has been one of my favorite things to do. 
and mm -hmm. and I'm gonna kind of like you know and most people are like uh no I would I'm not gonna drink a white Russian with and smoke a cigar you're missing out you are missing out if you don't do that and enjoy it and it's kind of like how you were saying you know another one of my favorite is chocolatinis I'll do a white chocolatini and regular chocolatini and I haven't mm -hmm. had where I've smoked a cigar and gone ooh, this is so bad I don't want to drink this anymore let me change it up so I just kind of I I was like oh she's a sister after my own heart <laughs> So, so we, we got a question from from our viewers. Albert asks, was it called Lucky Jack Coffee? I, I don't I think that question's for you, Cynthia. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What, what was was it called Lucky Jack Coffee? The one that you mixed with the um, with the martini. They, on the different the company that sent you something was it lucky jack that's what he was asking oh he wanted to know what the name of the company was yeah, yeah. oh i'm sorry i'm sorry yeah let me look at yeah I, did, I didn't i didn't phrase it correctly <laughs> yeah and, and i'll look it up working. right here real quick yes um yeah they have a great selection they're they're super delicious uh, let's see. Okay, and here it is. It's called Rebel. Rebel. Mm. Okay. So, Look, so it's. Let me see if if you guys can. Like, wait a minute. I don't think we we're gonna be able to see it because of the background. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I know, yeah. But, and I know so, Whole Foods. You said it was at Whole Foods, right? Mm -hmm. So um. On my uh, Instagram page that is called hostess underscore with the mostest, there's a lot of pictures that I myself taken um, of the cocktails that I made or put together during the pandemic. Everything was closed. So I needed to entertain myself with something. And that's one, that's the post. Um, it was their cold brew. I did the chocolate, yeah, the coffee martini, the white Russian. Uh, it was delicious. Um, I mean, there are so many things that products out there. There's a, a cocktail with um, that was, um, I made it with the Sephir, Sephirgen. Uh, they're in Texas. And Suffragen has her own recipes. They sent me a recipe that they wanted me to make so I could post it with their uh, gin. And mm -hmm. it was to, you know, to use. Um, at that time, they wanted uh, the cocktail to have some components that was healthy. Mm -hmm. You know, it was the, yeah. the COVID and everything. Uh, it has uh, an orange a spoon <laughs> of elderberry syrup. Oh, that's interesting. So you know, I was, never thought about making a cocktail with that. It was two ounces of the Sephir Black. You know, it was gin. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, half an ounce of dry vermouth and a mm -hmm. bar spoon of elderberry syrup. That. And I had oh, to go to Whole Foods. To buy the elderberry, yeah. but but you know what Whole Foods does not have lychee, lychee, or however you how you pronounce it. The they, lychee, no. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah. I had yeah. to go. I went to five different stores. My boss, I get back, and my boss is like, uh, "Long lunch day." I was like, "Well, I'm trying to find lychee," and he just goes, "Is that for your show tonight?" I was like, "Yeah, I won't have much time afterwards," and he goes. No worries. I was just giving you a hard time. But I went to six different stores and finally I said, okay, heck with it. I went to found an Asian food market that I drove like 10 miles. Oh, to yeah. mm -hmm. And they yeah. didn't even have the fruit, but they had this like big old huge half gallon uh, of the juice. Yeah, the can. Yeah. No, no, it's, it's not in a can. Just it's like juice? a drug. It's just the juice. Oh, just the juice. juice. Just the juice oh. in the can. So, oh, so yeah. I mean, I don't have anything to to garnish it, but mm -hmm. but what's funny is my daughter 
you know, my, my daughter and her husband, this husband st- live with me. And so she's with me on this and she goes, okay, dad, we're going to do a shot of this. And we've never tried it, poured us each of a, a shot in a shot glass. And we both, you know, naturally, I mean, have it from what we do, you know, you know, st- learning to, to get my sommelier for both my wine and wit and spirits is all you, you take it on the nose first. So I, I went up and smelled it. And I was just like, oh my God, that smells horrible. <laughs> and then tasted it. And I was like, wow, this is really good. And she tried and she goes, yeah, this is good. Just don't smell it first. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that is interesting because like with me, cause like, you know, I have like Amazon. Let me tell you, Amazon saves me because you just get it to the, I, I'm willing to pay for that convenience because I, I just don't have time. And they had the cans of it. And, but I'm not, my kids, okay, so it's, a, it's after like somewhere, I don't even know what time it is, but my, uh, my, my son said it looked like two testicles. <laughs> You know, it, 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 I mean, that's coming from a 21 year old, you know, I'm going to have to say that. And he's like, why did you put two testicles in your drink? So um, I, I think that's kind of, you know, I am going to uh, excuse myself really quick. I'm going to go to the fridge and grab my cocktail. What do you <laughs> yes. do? I left it there so I could remain chill. Yes. Because it's extra warm over here in Puerto Rico as well. So. I'll be right back. So how is yours pairing, Greybeard? Because I'm like, that's what I'm interested in. It's very, very I mean, it's very balanced. Balanced? It's a very balanced pairing. Yeah, because like when you first, and the thing is, is like when you have a closed foot, because she had a closed foot and I had a closed foot. And we've talked about it. When you light a closed foot, the purpose, like why they do... close foot is you get more like when you have a close foot you get the strength of that cigar at the very bottom of it you know so yes cheers yes you can't pour it all over my computer Uh uh-oh so with close foot you get like a lot of that when you first do it so when I first did did it it was kind of like a you know a, a, a strong peppery because and I you know, of it, of the cigar, but it still went really well with the drink. Now that I'm going through my cigar and I'm getting close to like the second third of it, this cigar has like a sweetness to it. You know, um, I want to say kind of like that grainy oatmeal sweetness to it that you have from cereal. And it is like going so well with my cocktail both ways like it when I'm smoking it and even on the retro hell it brings out the sweetness of the cigar and it brings out the sweetness of you know we talked about like it was like I said if it, a peach and a pear got married that's what this baby would be you know and it is actually picking up that and you know how you were talking about whenever you have the vodka with like you know a natural spring or you know that it it's got a little bit of sweetness to it that vodka it's not so in your face i'm vodka and here's the grain of the potato so um or corn or however it depends on how they're making it right so well and it it depends on how many it depends upon how many times they've distilled it too because the more times you distill it the higher the proof is going to be and that proof is going to come through so where where you and i both we're both at at uh 80 proof 40 percent because i'm i'm mine is with dripping springs as well and i'm not sh- i'm not sure what yours is but i mean other other vodkas where you're coming in and there is no ceiling on vodka you know like, you know you can have a vodka that's coming in at at 160 170 proof unlike bourbon you know to where really you know it's not supposed to be bottled more than 125 proof you know, it's got to come out of the barrel at 125 proof. So, so that's going to come in to play with it as well. 
And then, and then I want to bring out another note. So both of us are both, all three of us are, are smoking Maduro or Escotos. Mine, mine is an Escoto. And a lot of people equate the color of the leaf to peppery or spicy. And, and what you just said just brings home the point of what we've been saying for the past mm -hmm. few weeks. The longer that the tobacco leaf, leaf is fermented, the darker it's going to get. It's going to go into those darker colors, the Maduro, the double Maduro, the Escaro. And that brings out the sweetness of the leaf and brings that much more forward. Right. So you just, brought, you just brought home that point of what we're trying to make. And so people quit thinking that a Maduro is automatically or an Escaro is automatically going to be a strong, bold, in your face cigar. It's it, it's the whole it's the whole blend together right. that takes that brings it to that point, not just the color of the wrapper. There, right. I'll step off of my my soapbox. Your soapbox for a minute, yeah. <laughs> so, um, so I'm just in 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 like Greybeard said he was fanboying. I'm fangirling. Because, you know, you, I think it's like, you know, um, you, ha you have so many different uh, platforms and things. So like the first one, I was so glad because you answered one of the questions, like, you know, of, you know, the, um, now I can't, my mind went blank. My Spanish brain hasn't kicked in. So oh, I'm, the, not the even pronounce that. I'm not yeah. even going to The hermanas, the hermanas, the hermanas that one and almost went into Spanish but like the hermanas you got that together in Puerto Rico so women can come together and do that and you said that you've been doing that for two two years correct on that one yeah. so um you answered my question because I was going to say okay how how did you start that how did that come about and but it's not officially like you know uh, you told us your goal so how did you come and form that in then it went kind of like into the sister of the leaf global movement, the movement, I'm going to say global, but the movement, um, which was perfect, like a marriage for that. But then you have your Puerto Rico Cigar Fest. So like, I just want to know everything that you're involved in. So tell us how you got there. And, you know, when you started smoking cigars, all of that beautiful thing and cocktails, because she's a mixologist. And I just want to come, when I come to Puerto Rico, I want to come hang with you and smoke and drink. We're yeah, and, I, like lay I on wanna, the beach. I want to come. I want to come down to Puerto Rico for the cigar festival. My only fear yes. is that everybody's going to be talking Spanish, and I'm going to be going. Be like, yo no sé, yo no sé. ¿Qué? 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 You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Don't, don't. <laughs> well, um, the uh, I, I started in in the spirit cocktail part of it. Um, I discovered the world of cocktails around 2015 or so. Um, here in Puerto Rico, uh, they were promoting these uh, these events with for world class the world class competitions, and they were bartenders or mixologists from different uh countries from latin america uh coming because puerto rico was one of the hosts for these presentations and competitions were taking place and so i just attend that like oh this is cool let me check it out um so when i went i didn't know i, I had no expectations i've never been so when i i went to my the first bar i'm like wow this is amazing and now all of these garnishes, like all these like uh, bay, um, not bay leaves, um, uh, the, they have cilantro and they have mm. the other mints and they have all sorts of herbs, right? Yeah. And basil yeah. and Lavender, the fruit all and everything and the shaking and the pouring and, and these complexities of these cocktails. I fell in love with everything. I'm like, wow. It's like I discovered something awesome and uh from there from that moment on forget it i was going to everything that i could that i would see on social media i will go out to different bars and i started meeting 
you know, getting to know the, the bartenders at that time here in Puerto Rico. And then two years later, the Hurricane Maria hit. Uh, oh, yes, I remember that. Yeah. And then a few months later, um, with the agents, because I was working for the federal government at the time, I transferred to Texas. I went to Dallas. Um, and so I continued doing what I was doing here, exploring. That's what I was doing. I would explore, take pictures, post it, that type of stuff. Uh, but in, in, in Dallas, it took a different shape. It just grew into, you know what? I want to buy myself a Canon camera. Mm -hmm. A basic one, you know, a Rebel, uh, what is it, uh, S6, something like that. And I taught myself looking at YouTube, reading, whatever, I just taught myself uh, little by little by trial and error. I was so excited, taking all these awesome pictures and posting and and I will, after work, I will get off at 4.30 and I will have a list of the bars that I wanted to visit Monday to Friday. Yeah. And obviously it was perfect because at that time, happy hour, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, I was hour. ready perfect. for my pocket. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so every day I will go to a different bar, check other happy hours, take pictures, try different things, talk with the bartenders, and little by little, I created the this network, uh, mm -hmm. the competitions that there were taking place. Uh, one of them was the first competitions that I attended in Dallas was at the Standard Poor, and Uptown Dallas. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It was awesome. Like I will look forward to those Mondays. Mm -hmm. uh, the the brawl. That's what they called it. Something brawl. <laughs> and it took a few months, those competitions. Every yeah. Monday. When it ended, I was so sad. I'm like, well, I'm gonna do with my Mondays now. <laughs> um but the thing was that it, 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 there were um a lot of uh, Latino bartenders. So I, without realizing it, um, I learned later, it was brought to my attention that I was the only Latina cocktail blogger at the time in Dallas, Fort Worth. Like, really? Oh, okay. You know, if you say so. Actually, I, I was extended an invitation by uh, um, what is uh, they call they're, they're from Colorado it's a whiskey company out of Colorado and they invited me and they're the ones I remember they're the ones that told me that they were searching uh, for Kato bloggers and they wanted to have a good representation to, to have access to different parts of the community and they looked out for Hispanic uh, Latino or Latina cultural bloggers in the area and I came up with hostess with the most from Puerto Rico and that's how I got invited that's when I learned about that like wow really wow that's interesting well, and then was the distillery Breckenridge or Stranahan's or actually I have uh, where's the bottle? Oh my goodness. I'm trying to look for the bottle. We, we can never find the bottle when we want to find the bottle. Oh my goodness. We oh, never find the cigar when we want to find the cigar, right? Right. Like, like Graybeard experienced that earlier. And you know, as soon as this show is over, I'm going to go upstairs and find I'm exactly what's up here. Up here. I cannot believe it. It's something about, uh, is it oak? Axe in the oak. Axe, axe yeah, axe in the oak. oak. Yes, axe in the oak. Those, those are good friends of mine. Yes, I was yes. gonna say, Graybeard actually did a barrel, uh, a barrel pick with one of our groups on that. Yeah. 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 Good, good friends, good friends. Yeah, and uh, they, did this launch uh, different places in downtown, on uh, the downtown area and different cities of Texas. 
because they had they were just introducing the line, the brand to the to the market of in, in Texas. So and that was uh, 2018. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, in 2018. I, I, and I um, when they launched when they launched here. Yes. So that's when I learned about that. Um, and it's it just something that just one door open the other type of thing. But yeah. I would say I will contribute it more to the right play, the, the right time, the right place. It was the right moment. It, right. it, it just happened like that. Um, and that helped me a lot uh, to one, uh, get noticed if you want to call it like that um mm -hmm. and be invited i got invited like every week every week there was a brand doing something uh, most of all these events are uh, take place monday through thursday for the most part um because well you know it's slower in the bars and it costs them less money than during the weekends it's a uh, higher exactly so, um, so many brands, uh, I mean, it's, it's just incredible. And the network of people with the bartenders and the liquor reps and the brand ambassadors mm -hmm. and so forth. Um, I was very, very welcomed by the industry. But another thing was that I would follow I will give follow to all the bars. I will search, do search of all the bars and I will follow them if they had a presence on social media because then they will post, hey, uh, Tuesday night, we're going to have this brand. The brand is going to be here. And most of the time, they were free. These, mm -hmm. This was free product. And so, they will allow you yeah. to go behind the sticks and shake your own cocktail. Try mm -hmm. the, the recipe. They wanted interaction. They wanted people to really have the experience. And there will be food bites and everything and swag. <laughs> and, and, you know, um, and that's how I, I would see all these things. So they will say RSVP and it will be at one or two o'clock in the afternoon. I will mm -hmm. ask time off from work because I was working in downtown. So it was perfect. I will ask for some hours of my own time. I will go to the event and then I will go back to work. And that's how I would do it. Sometimes there were uh, presentations, kind of classes of brands like Diageo will do them. Yep. Uh, or if not, it will be specific, like Kettle One will do it or it will be Patron. And it will be at 10 o'clock in the morning at a bar. And you will have bartenders attending them, right? To come up to speed with the product and some liquor reps. I will be the only cocktail blogger at 10 o'clock in the morning, sitting with all of them, having cocktails and tastings of these spirits and writing down. I will have so much stuff written down in little books and annotations. Because besides that, I was passionate about it and I loved it. I felt that I had a responsibility that if I had a platform and I was going to write content and share my experiences and the event and cocktails and the recipes and how to make them and all that, you need to know what you're writing about. Exactly. You know, you're not going to do a copy paste. There's a no. lot of yes. bloggers <laughs> out there. They do that. Oh, yeah. I, a lot. I, no. I yes. do not reference. I, I, I copy what they posted and I put it in Google and voila, word by word. They oh, just yeah. don't copy and paste. They don't even bother to switch their words around and put in their own words. It, but, it's the same on, it's the same on, on cigar pairings and, and cigar notes. I mean, I've, I've sitting there mm -hmm. and I've seen where, you know, so-and-so magazine, you know, easing that's based out of Dallas here that loves to describe their cigars in a very uh, overly boisterous way. And then you'll copy and paste that into another, you know, into Google and you'll see that 
X number of other websites that are not as big as as this one, and I'm, I'm trying to tiptoe around the name, but I'm pretty sure everybody knows who I'm talking about. Yeah. And you'll see the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. and, then, and I say, I see the same thing on pairings. And, and when I'm writing about pairings, I, I try, you know, I, I try to not, I, I purposely don't read out, go out and read the notes of whatever the drink is that I, or the, the yeah. drink or the cigar is. And then come up with our own notes, our own notes, and describe that and write it that way. And that's the only way that you're going to grow your palate. Because if you read, then you're influenced by what you're reading, and you're not exactly. you're not understanding what you're tasting. And and my and like and I love the fact. So I'm I'm gonna like I love 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 the fact that you went out there. And the thing is, is like, they have so many opportunities. You just have to look for them. For and free. I love that you, for free. Yeah. I got That's all the invitations is they for free. free. Yes. And I know that like, you know, for me, I can't, because of what I do during my day job, I can't go out and taste liquor, but it's kind of like how you were saying, I was sitting there thinking, okay, I started doing mixology back like in 2025, 20, 26, I had five kids at home and they were five and under at that time. So I was like, I needed a stress release. And that was my stress release was to make different cocktails. And, and I love the fact that you said that you went to YouTube and you went, and here's the thing, and I'm showing my age and we're all showing our age. Back when we were younger, we didn't have YouTube. We didn't have any of this stuff. So it was harder for us to discover things. And it was kind of funny because like, I was meeting with uh, someone who was 25 and they're like, how did you do certain things without the internet? And I'm like, well, we had a hard copy and all this other stuff. The internet is such a beautiful to tool that we can go on YouTube and we can research things. We can look at different things. We can go to TikTok because TikTok is the new, you know, almost like kind of like a YouTube kind of a thing where they can show you how to mix drinks or, you know, even smoke, you know, light a cigar or different things. And it's a great tool that we have, but I love the fact that you said that you weren't scared to watch the videos. You weren't scared to learn and you weren't scared to go to the classes. And the only way I think that if you want to grow is to, you know, to learn this stuff, is to look up to things like there. that yes. and to see what's out there. Because like when you, when you discover in a lot of, like we kind of talked about this last week, and, and I hate to say that we talked about this last week, but we kind of did, is like we talked about like go to Cut and Light, go to the liquor events, the mixology events, go to the events like we, like how I met you with the sister of the Leaf Global Movement, go to your cut and lighting things because this is the way you're going to learn things. And if you want to enjoy things more, it's out there mm -hmm. and it's available and it's right at our fingertips. And it's such a beautiful thing and go to blogs, read what you can about things, and you learn so much. But also, I kind of like how you were saying, be leery about some things, because I know for Greybeard and yourself and I, we, when whenever we publish things, it comes from our heart. Mm -hmm. There are certain things that don't come from people's heart, so you kind of have to be leery about what you're looking at and to see if it comes from people's hearts. Does that make sense? I, I would even add to all of that of uh, be willing to be willing to step outside of your boundaries, to step outside yes. of your own box. Because if you know if all you ever drink is is Highland Scotch then you're never going to understand what an Islay scotch is or a, a or a weeded, weeded bourbon or anything else. If all you ever 
smoke is the quote unquote full body cigars or medium body cigars, then you're never going to understand no. the, the beauty that that's in a that's in a classic Dominican Republic cigar or the, the beauty that's in a in a true plastic Cuban cigar. Well, and I'm going to even say to go percent of mixology, you know, yeah. because that's where that's where I think is kind of like where uh, Cynthia and I and, and in Greybeard we're passionate about. Um, I'm going to say that I became interested in mixology to escape from my kids. You know, I needed an escape and something. And, you know, um, I think that's the beauty of it. So um, it you learn so much by trial and error and be willing to say, okay, this didn't work, so let's try this. And that kind of brings it back. It's like where you study, okay, this vodka is from an ice glacier. You know, and like the vodka that you listed, that you stated is such an amazing vodka. And like, I've had it a couple of times. And like, and the thing is, is like, I've had it and I forgot about it. And I'm like, when you brought it up, it totally reminded me of like, that's an amazing vodka. I need to revisit that. So um, follow us and follow them. I'm just yeah, going to put and, that in there. So go and, ahead, Gray And, and, and fo follow Cynthia. And, yes. and when we when I post this on YouTube, I'll post your um, your YouTube channels, your Instagram channels, you know, and all all of your channels so that they can get in contact with you. But I'm curious is I mean, what a, wow, what a fantastic journey into cocktails. I mean, and and you are definitely someone that I respect when it comes to that. I'm curious as to how you transition that into cigars and pairing pairing cigars to your cocktails yeah. and what your approach is. So I've been smoking since I was 21 years old, but it was something that I kept for myself, did for myself. Um, so I kept it separately. I, I started smoking cigars before I even learned or started even drinking any type of alcohol. See, so my first love was tobacco, cigars. And, um, so uh, you've been smoking? Since I was 21. Yeah. And I'm 50 now. And um, I was sitting there thinking I, you were my age. <laughs> You were yeah. like in your 40s. Yeah. Yeah. I just turned 50 in January. You you yes. both you both you both are young and, and <laughs> I'll be damned. I've been smoking cigars longer than both of y'all. So <laughs> um and so but I, I I was too young, so I, I didn't pay attention what is what was it I, I was smoking. Now I, my first cigar was a Davidoff. I will go over to oh, the fancy. to the cigar shop lounge in El Hotel San Juan right here in Isla Verde uh, near me. And, you know, they had premium cigars there. So I yeah. didn't, I mean, I didn't know how important it was the Davidoff or the Romeo Juliet, you know, the Monte Cristo or nothing like that. I, yeah. I just, you know, whatever. Um, I just wanted to smoke cigars. And um, that's how I started. And, but, you know, now going now forward to 2015, when I start with all this in the cocktails and spirits and learning all this stuff in 2017, mm -hmm. 18, 19, and so forth. In 2020, June of 2020, I transfer back to Puerto Rico. When I transferred back to Puerto Rico, I started getting in contact again with the bartenders here. I kept some, you know, I will follow them and whatnot. But when I came back, I was like, okay, let me find out where are they? Where are they? Where are they bartending? What, what, what they're doing? And one of them, uh, he said, hey, yeah, I'm at uh, Casa Monte Cristo. I'm like, Casa Monte Cristo? Okay, so 
It's on old San Juan. Come and fix it. I'm like, okay. So I went. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, this is awesome. This is beautiful. And mm -hmm. the, the bar, you know, the craft of cocktails, the whole thing, and the walking humidor. I, yeah. That's when both worlds came together for me. Yeah. That was the awe yeah. moment. Because before I before I left and went to Texas, there was no Casa Monte Cristo. Right. There were there were just you can count them with the fingers of one hand. Okay. What we had in Puerto Rico as a cigar shop slash lounge, maybe? No. There was no nothing. There was no traditional cigar lounge in Puerto Rico. There was only, there was one, uh, but it was for members only. Oh. They will keep switching it back, members only and then not and then yes. But the, for the most part, members only, which is uh, at the Vanderbilt in the Condado area, as mm -hmm. called uh, the Avo Lounge, uh, very expensive. You know, it's very high end. Um, but any other place that you could go to, because later with the years, the Hotel San Juan, the cigar lounge shop that I was telling you about, they closed. When the hotel passed to a different management was bought out, they turned the hotel as a non-smoking hotel. They eliminated it. Oh, and, and that's, it, it was gone. Um, yeah. And so when I was working, you know, at that time with the federal government, Right, we had a, there's it's still there a whole um, a mall and inside the mall there's one of those uh, cigar chains it's called Don Rey so they're in La Placita Santurza will go on Thursday night to sing karaoke and they will have the cigars in the plaza in the open and I'll grab a cigar and smoke my cigar before I will start bolting out and singing karaoke uh, <laughs> and drinking mojitos. Yes! Um, yes. Um, and then, uh, but they still have that shop inside the mall. You cannot smoke there. You just uh, you buy the cigars there. So I will buy them and and take them home. That type of stuff. Um, yeah. But since 2019, thing has been changing a little bit, and mm -hmm. uh, because Casa Monte Cristo opened, and then other little lounges are opening, spread out. Like there are bar restaurants, but they allow cigar smoking and they will have like little humidors or space to have some, a few cigars for people to buy. That type of scenario, that type of setup. And, um, and that just started uh, 2019 to 2020 by the time I got here. Wow. So, um, that was June of 2020 and August 2020, I opened my platform of Mujeres y Humo, Sotolo, Puerto Rico, and that's where we are today. Uh, so it, it, it's one of those things, everything that I have accomplished since, you know, when I started the whole thing in 2015, it's been growing organically. It wasn't something that this is what I want to do and this is how I'm going to do it. No, it was... I fell in love. I fell in love and everything has grown from there. And it's one of those things that, and I just noticed that the, the last couple of days with everything that I'm doing, still my head is going like, wow, what if? I'm still with the what if. And I have like a, a pen and like a, a tablet of paper right next to my nightstand and all of a sudden I will have these ideas. I have it in my car as well. I have it in my purse. When a dia comes around, I write it down or whatnot. And then I follow through and do some research later. It's one of those things that when when I think that I've 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 okay this is it. I'm done. No, I'm not done. <laughs> because there's still so much to do. There's so much room. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um it, it, it's it's art basically if you think about it it's art it's a form of art when a person 
when you, when it's about creating, being creative, and there's no expiration date for that. No, there, there's not. And there's, no. there, there's so much to learn and so much to grow in, mm -hmm. in all of this. And, and I love that you described it as art because me, myself being an artist as well, that's where I've been drawn so much into cigars and whiskeys and wines and and even more so now I'm getting more into the, the cocktails and it's an it's an art in the pairing of them and and taking that pairing on to that next level as what uh, Joe loves to say it's where it's more than just a a light bodied cigar with this you know light body cigar with, with a white wine well i've paired a i've paired a what a lot of people would call a medium bodied cigar medium body dominican with a white wine we've done we've done it with champagnes and you've got to pay attention to what's in it you know to find those behaviors and i love how you said this and red mentioned it find those behaviors those those flavors that will behave and if you can find those flavors that will, you know, a minimum behave, but if you can find those flavors that will marry, now, now you've got something that's beautiful. Yes. Yeah. And um, so that's where those two worlds came together. And Mujeres y Humo kept going from there uh, and then putting together events. But before I started doing events here in Puerto Rico, um, that was uh, by my first trip was in November 2020. I went back to Dallas, visited some cigar lounges and whatnot. I got invited to be at the Good Cigar podcast. Mm -hmm. And you know, Al Roman is a fan of cocktails. He loved cocktails. So uh, we had so much fun uh, recording that podcast. Um, and from there, I started traveling. I took um, some money that I had in my savings. And I said, I'm going to travel in 2021. Pandemic, yes. Actually, when I went in November of 2020 to that trip in Dallas, just after a few months that I have transferred back to Puerto Rico, when I came back from that trip, I came back with COVID. Um, oh, no. Yeah. So uh, by the time I got better and everything, my first trip was in January when I went to PA and I hosted two events in PA sponsored by Don Q, Don Q Rum. Um, I even cooked, cooked the cocktails the whole nine uh, for the events. Um, then in March, I went back to PA, uh, but in February, I went to the Great Smokes and Florida yeah. with Abe yes. and, and, and it just kept going and then in April I traveled for two weeks I went to Orlando Cigar Festival which was the first one then I went to Las Vegas uh, Cigar Festival and then I went to Chicago to visit a few cigar lounges and promote and then in May I went to Houston Cigar Week and so forth yeah yeah and that's when, with all the traveling, I was like, you know what? Um, Puerto Rico needs presence. There's a rich history of tobacco and cigars in Puerto Rico. And we have and I don't lost. think people realize that. No, so we, it they was don't. lost. It got lost. When you see all the documentaries, even the hand roll, which is a beautiful documentary, by oh, the way. Yes. But Puerto Rico is nowhere to be mentioned. And, and Puerto Rico, from, 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 my, from my research that I've been doing on some of the articles that I'm writing for, for a magazine that I write for, I'm noticing that Puerto Rico is really well known for, in the cigar side of the industry, mm -hmm. so all of the blenders and the factories, for their beautiful tobacco for fillers and have done so much for fillers. And 
I'm wondering why it isn't that we don't know about that, about Puerto Rico. Right. Because yeah. I'm learning, it's like, wow, I had no idea how much history was there. Exactly. Tobacco and cigars. And it only makes sense. It knowing does. The history of where the tobacco, how the tobacco came up into the Caribbean. It it's, only it's kind of like that duh moment. Yes. That's what I had. It's like that duh, but it's sadly not mentioned, like you were saying. Well, I mean, just to make it very short and simple, um, there was a moment in time where Puerto Rico was producing, growing tobacco, of course, Dominican Republic, but in Cuba and so forth. Um, what happened that at that time, all these islands were under the Spaniard regimen, right? The, the crown mm -hmm. of Spain. So they were the government. And they came to a point that they established uh, a, a band, what well, is called in Spanish, estanco and estanco for 10 years. You were not allowed to grow uh, tobacco. They have taken the seeds that were grown naturally here in the island and in Cuba, and they took it. Oh, okay. Um, and they took it to the states, to the also to my, but that's later on. That's later on. But they took some of that and they start producing because they saw the value of it, right? But then um, Cuba have made uh, a claim and submitted, let's call it a proposal, right? Where, hey, you know what? They presented a business proposal, hey, we need this, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, okay, fine. So they lifted the ban in Cuba, but they never lifted the ban in Puerto Rico. Oh. So wow. basically what ended up happening was that it created a contraband in Puerto Rico. There were families growing tobacco under the radar secretly, but in the government at that time, the Spanish government, they they learn about it. They will destroy your crop. And, and it was even a death sentence at that time. Wow. Um, yeah. So That's basically you have Cuba in the forefront. Mm -hmm. Not were they only growing, but they were crafting. They were rolling. They were blending cigars. Puerto Rico wasn't. Later, when finally got uh, lifted in the early 900, uh, 1900s, Puerto Rico was the fourth growing tobacco producer in, mm -hmm. the, in the Caribbean. And the tobacco, Puerto Rico was only producing growing tobacco to be exported. The tobacco that was consumed locally was more like, like chewing tobacco. They will have these ropes of tobacco okay. and they will cut it by yards mm -hmm. and they will use it to chew. And just very simple, you know, rolling cigars, nothing high, you know, uh, thought after or whatnot. So we lagged behind when it came to growing within the industry. Uh, um, perfecting that art, that craft. Um, Puerto Rico was behind also uh, when it came to being self-sufficient and producing for their own. Uh, by the time uh, Spain lost the war, uh, Cuba went on its way, Republic Dominican Republic went its, its way, but Puerto Rico as an island was very, very extremely poor. There was no construction of anything here. So when the United States at that time with the leaders that were here in Puerto Rico at that time, they asked, what do you wanna do? Do you wanna you know, you know, be on your own? 
uh, what do you want to do? And, they, and the, the ones that were at that time, they said, well, we need help. We, we need some construction and stuff like that. We need the assistance. Like, okay, no problem. Um, at that time, they started building school, roads, hospitals, you know, all that stuff. Um, and my grandfather uh, that served in, in the Second World War, the Second World War, he learned English in school here in Puerto Rico. The texts were in English. Okay. Okay. When later in the 50s, when the government, when they say, okay, Puerto Rico can have their own governor and have their own government structure mirrored to the one in the States, then that changed. And then uh, all that was taken out and there were no texts in English, no classes in English, everything was into Spanish. Okay. Um, they're paying the industrialization. So not only tobacco disappeared, sugarcane disappeared and almost coffee growing disappeared. Um, so Puerto Rico became very dependent on the industrial mm -hmm. um, private companies, pharmaceuticals and stuff like that. So we had a different path, a different journey than our sister and brothers in the Caribbean. Uh, and just that's just to put it very simply, but it's much more complicated than that. Mm -hmm. We had Luis Caldera. Uh, he's a doctor, a professor that wrote uh, two volumes of the story of the history of the tobacco in Puerto Rico. And he launched a English version of it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's very, very interesting. It, it truly is. Now there is a movement in Puerto Rico for the last couple of years of local cigar rollers that they want to recapture the, the history of tobacco in Puerto Rico. Oh, um, I would love to see that yeah. happen. So yes, there's production, there's growing of tobacco in Puerto Rico, but mainly, like you said, they use it for fillers. They use some and they, they, they do limited runs when they have it available for their own lines but there's not enough production for you to compete, for us to compete with Dominican Republic, Nicaragua, Mexico, and so forth. Okay. It takes uh, an infinite amount of money, of resources to be able to do something like yeah. that. Yeah, I, I, uh, I Exactly. So some of the things that I've heard in the industry that the reasons that they that have been given why companies don't come here to invest, all because it's too expensive. Like, well, Puerto Rico is a U.S. territory. Yeah, you grow tobacco in Pennsylvania. You yeah. grow tobacco in Kentucky and, and in Florida, Florida and Connecticut. I mean, yeah. uh, and growing tobacco in the states is not cheap. The Pennsylvania broadly, the Connecticut broadly, these are very uh, quite expensive tobacco. The, and it is the most expensive tobacco. And that that I want in other countries to make blends, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it cannot only solely be that. I know it has to do with so many other things, more political than anything, the red tape and all this other stuff, because it's complicated. You have Puerto Rico as a US territory, but we had two governments. We had the local state government. We had the federal government. I mean, you have, we cannot do any sorts of uh, deals, commercial deals with any other country directly. We had to do it all through the United States. So anything that comes into Puerto Rico has to come in a vessel with the American flag. It cannot come in from any other country, right? The Jones Act. Right. So it's gonna be really it's challenging. Really extremely complicated. So there's yeah. so many factors that comes into play. Um, coffee here in Puerto Rico is 
extremely delicious. But it can be expensive because the few growers there are here in Puerto Rico, coffee growers, uh, I mean, they produce, They're, it's incredible, but some, they keep it, it's, they yield very little. So it, it becomes very expensive. Uh, some what they do is they blend local beans with beans from other countries, just like we do with the cigars. We blend some of our own with uh, Mexican or Dominican or Nicaraguan and so forth to have. So we can say that we have hand rolled Puerto Rican, hand rolled cigars made in Puerto Rico. Um, there's a few that I've heard, they claim they're, they have 100% puro Puerto Rican cigars. Honestly, I have not tried them. Uh, maybe one or two, what they claim to be, but I cannot vouch for that because I have not seen it. I have not seen the production. I haven't seen it made where they can, where I can say, yeah, I've been witness to it. I have proof. I can say that. I was going to say, um, I can look at a single cigar yeah. that, that, that has even Puerto Rico tobacco on it. And, and one of the, one of the sad things about, about how we label our cigars is that a Dominican Republic cigar, a cigar can be, be called a Dominican Republic cigar if it's rolled there and have its tobacco come from any other, re, you know, any other region. So it could mm -hmm. absolutely have filler cigar, you know, filler tobacco that's originated in Puerto Rico, but it's classified as a Dominican because it was rolled there. Yeah. And I, I think that does a, a disservice to some of the other smaller regions. So, you know, Peru is another region that- Oh my goodness, yeah. But is, I mean, I've, I've, smoked, I've smoked some cigars that has Peruvian tobacco in it and those great cigars. But unless you know, and you delve deep into it to understand, mm -hmm. you, you have, you have yeah. no idea that that's part of where it's come from. We, we've got a couple of questions since we're talking about Puerto Rico. Uh, one question that came back, and, and I'm curious as to this, because especially with your with your Sisters of the Leaf movement, and, and I'm not going to try to pronounce the, the other one, you know, that originated. <laughs> um, how many... Uh, yeah, no, I, I'm too Texan. Um, how many women in Puerto Rico uh, smoke cigars? Is, is it a big population? And then along the <coughs> lines of what you've just been talking about, <laughs> Did Puerto Rico see a big impact on 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 the rum industry with with all of this that that had gone in, on in Puerto Rico? All right, so I want to start with a rum question. Uh, Puerto Rico uh, produces uh, at least eighty percent of the rum that it is sold in the United States. Wow! Wow! That is why oh, Puerto Rico. Yeah. Like that, I'm just like my mind just wait. That is why Puerto Rico is called uh, the wrong capital of the world. Wow, I, I didn't oh, know that was the, the wrong capital of the world. Yeah, no and idea. And it's not because oh, it's the best rum in the world, and our rum is good. It's 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 awesome, but it's because of the production of the rum that is produced in Puerto Rico. And then you will go like, well, wait a minute, you just said that the cultivation of sugarcane in Puerto Rico is almost none. And yes, that's true. Um, there are some sugarcane or varieties of sugarcane grown in Puerto Rico. And there are some new rums that are being produced in Puerto Rico with those sugarcanes. But for the most part, uh, let's say, uh, Serrayes, which is Don Q, or uh, Bacardi, and so forth. These, the, 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 um, they bring the molasses, they're imported, okay? They're okay. imported. There's no way for us to produce the amount of rum that we produce in Puerto Rico in order, without the amount of sugarcane that you need for that. So the molasses are imported. 
What is unique to each brand is their yeast that they use as a secret recipe of years and their families that is used to, you know, ferment their own rum, their way of their distilling and their process and so forth. That's a whole different, right? So that's what makes everybody's rum different and unique, of course. But the molasses that are used to produce the rum, it's imported, okay? So there we go again. We have production, but a lot of the raw materials are imported in order to produce these products. And then the other question about how many women, I don't have an exact, an exact count because not all the women that are cigar smokers in Puerto Rico, they do not uh, belong to the Mujeres y Mons uh, Sotolo Puerto Rico, but I can say that by going to the different shops, cigar lounges and so forth, there are more than there were a few years back. I mean, you will not see no woman, none at these places because they were mainly for men uh, with a plastic chair sitting in front of, of the shop and the sidewalk drinking beer. No, women were not gonna be there. But now you have a Casa de Monte Cristo, um, which is a beautiful space. And you have cigar smokers, you have non-cigar smokers that go there because of the crafts and cocktails. Um, and everybody comes together and have a good time. And a lot of women, they smoke for the first time. They're like, well, I'm already here. I might as well, let me try it, right? And so forth. I've been reached out. Hi, I'm following your, your page. I'm such, you know, interested. And okay, let's meet. And that's how I have a lot of the members. That's how I've met them. They became members because they will reach out. We will meet at the Casa Monte Cristo, what have you, and so forth. But um, it, there's much more now. They're more willing to try. They are a little bit more comfortable wanting to go to a uh, cigar lounge, um, but still we have long ways to go. There, it, it's, we're still not, in comparison to what we see in the States, when there's events that there, if, with what I've seen or what I've experienced and witnessed in the States, we're not there yet. We're not okay. there yet, but we are way better than we were years back. Um, I was reading some question about what was it? Don't cool crystal. What was that? Yeah. So, so we had a, a cu couple of questions. Um, one is, uh, is, is Don Q Cristal popular in Puerto Rico? And the other one is, are you a fan of Wesson Yandel? Yeah. Of course, Wesson Yandel. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, uh, that's another part of our culture, right? The urban part of it, uh, the reggae, eh, well, it used to be how it started, reggaeton, because it came from reggae yeah it was in the <laughs> 90s late 80s early 90s uh i was in high school i was in senior year um and this movement was starting um and then it is what it is today right mm -hmm. um but yeah definitely i, I love we seen in gender <laughs> see and, um, and i'm glad that you brought that up because like i started in 1997 when in this is back in the day when you could smoke cigars when you were 18. I think uh, that was kind of another thing. So I started at 19 when I started smoking cigars. And I and I think and I, and it's this, it's kind of like the same question. Is I think that like in the, the 90s, like late 80s, early 90s, and even into the late 90s was women started smoking cigars like publicly you know before it was always hidden and then in the you know the 90s is when it became like a I don't want to say a fad but I, I hate to say it that's when it became a fad where everybody would try it and that's when women were like okay it's okay social 
like sociably, I don't, I don't know if I said the word correctly, yeah. Yeah, to uh, yeah. smoke cigars. So that's kind of like, for me, that's when it was like, okay to smoke cigars. And then for a while, we kind of disappeared in the background. And then here recently, we came full force. I mean, I don't know. Is that like kind of the same experience you had? Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, and let me and, and and let me say this. Uh, at home, nobody smoked cigarettes or cigars. Right. But there was a full bar. Okay, my dad was an avid collector. Actually, I have bottles right now that they're thirty-five years old. And my own oh bar. Oh gosh, it's awesome. And my dad just handed them to me because he cannot drink anymore. You know, yeah. it's hard and medications and all that. But back yeah. in the day, we had a huge bar in the living room and never gave me the curiosity to try any of it. I was like, eh, eh, whatever. My dad will travel a lot because of his job. And every time he will travel, he will bring bottles. And um, and at that time back then, um, it was normal here to see minors at a bar <laughs> with their dad or their mom and people smoking mm -hmm. and drinking. It was part of the culture, family gatherings, everybody drinking and smoking, whoever smoked, whatever, and you were there. Right. Now they will call child services on you. But back then, that was the norm. So mm -hmm. on the weekends, my parents didn't pay for sitters or nothing. We'll go out as a family. We'll be all together. We'll go to dinner, whatever. And then we'll walk around Old San Juan. And my dad knew a lot of you know people. My dad sings. So they knew he said, hey, come over here. Sing us a song. And we were with that. <coughs> you know, he was sorry belting out, singing, drinking, people smoking, and we were there like, you know, whatever. For me, it was normal. Yeah. Um, so I grew up in that environment, but it never uh, hinted me to want to drink. And I never come across with cigar smoking until I was eight years old. And it was because my dad's boss, he was Cuban and he smoked the pipe. And then cigars. Right. Yeah, because in this bars and stuff, I never saw anybody smoking cigars. It was cigarettes. Um, so what I'm trying to say with this story, this background story is to explain, it was normal to see kids with their parents hanging around all these places, but yet it was not okay or common to see women by themselves or with other ladies smoking and drinking in these places. If you saw a woman doing that, which there were a few, oh, look at that one. Mm. Oh. You know, what, whatever. Yes, I can uh, smoke a yeah. yeah, see? Yeah. And yeah, the, 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 the demeanors or whatever, that was not ladylike. You're a lady, yeah. you don't do those things, you're not in that place, that's no place for a single woman or a woman to be there. Yeah. So obviously when I reach out, I, I was like wanting to smoke my own cigar. I wasn't doing it publicly. I would have it in my uh, balcony or somewhere when I was out, not do it like plain view, but that hotel in particular because it was very elegant. Very? You know? Uh, I feel kind yeah. of comfortable. They were welcoming, so I think I lucked out that mm -hmm. I had that my first experience to be like that. That yeah. at least there was somewhere that I could, but there was nowhere else at that Correct. time. So yeah, I mean, it, it's all about uh, the time and the era, and also the culture. Yeah. I grew up in a Latin culture. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, they're very strict when it comes to these things. Um, there was a question also about Don Q. So uh, a very 
interesting uh, 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 detail is that in Puerto Rico, most Puerto Ricans, they drink Don Q instead of Bacardi. Yeah. <laughs> Bacardi is very well known internationally. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it's a product that it's, and also in the States. But Don Q always remained very local. Um, now in Texas, if I'm not mistaken, is I think it's in Arlington, if I'm not mistaken. But in, they have the uh, Don Q USA. It, their offices, headquarters, is there in Texas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for yeah. the U.S. market. Um, and there's some more presence of the spirit in the states. But still, Bacardi is number one in the States, really, uh, or in, internationally. But there are other brands. You have Palo Viejo. Uh, it's another brand of, of, of rum. Then you have the Ron de Barrilito. It's another rum. Uh, that they, It's very old. Actually, Ron de Barrilito is the oldest rum, and, uh, local rum in Puerto Rico. And, and, and I want to kind of like... Yeah, go ahead. I'm, I'm so sorry. But I want to I want to touch like how you said it was like cross culture, because as a as a woman and, and I'm sorry my beard and and I just have to highlight this because like when I started in the late nineties to smoking I was I was like it was so hard to find other women who smoked cigar it was very difficult and I feel like here within the last you know, 10 years in the United States, it's become culturally acceptable, except, and, and I'm gonna kind of like point this on here because I've talked about my dad. And my dad, I love my father. I love what all he's done, but he cannot grasp the fact that I smoke cigars. Like he's okay with me drinking a beer, He's okay with me drinking other things, but the fact that I smoke a cigar, he's like, oh, you can't do that because it's not culturally accepted. So, you know, I think, I think it's a very important that you brought that fact upon, upon it because like here in the United States, and, it, and like Gravian, I'm going to reach out to you on this one, is like when it's become acceptable for us in the United States, and it kind of like how you said, for women to smoke cigars. And I feel like, you know, I started in the 90s and I felt like I was like one in like a hundred thousand that smoked a cigar. And I don't know if you felt that way too, but it was very rare to come across a woman who smoked in the 90s. And then I feel like in the last five to 10 years, it's been culturally accepted and then even then, it's kind of like, do you really know what you're doing with the cigar? I mean, th that's kind of like my question is the same for you in that aspect for like Puerto Rico, because we have such, like America has such an impact on Puerto Rico with their culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, I've been smoking cigars since 91, 92. So and I was ninety-seven for for for, thir for thirty plus years now, and I I never seen I never saw any women smoking cigars, really until like what you said, Red, and what what you talked about, Cynthia, is until like the last you know five five to ten years, and really in the last five years, and so really to kind of go along with Red's question, but. Well, one of the things I want to point out is that we see a lot of we see a lot of women that are that are really promoting the the Sisters of the Leave movement, and and I'm so thankful to see that. But I want to call out all the men that are watching all of this is that and and will watch this is that this is the responsibility is not just on the women to make it known that it's it's socially acceptable and encouraged for women to step out and smoke cigars. It's also on us. And I would yeah. say even bigger on us because 
as men, we're the ones that are usually coming out and going, oh, you're a woman that you're a woman that smokes cigars. Oh, well, you must be really new to it. And you must really only like the 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 sweet tipped or the infused flavored cigars. I mean, Red, you and I've seen that with, as we've gone traveled together and have gone into lounges where a, a man will come up to you in a humidor and go, Oh well, well we we have we have these uh, we have these sweet tips over here. Let, let me. Yeah, let me so, so, so my question, my question to kind of go along with that, is from what would you like to see for those of us that are men that are in the industry do to help? What can we do to help women? become more recognized as i mean out, outside of just social media because there's a lot of women that are really big into cigars and social media and some of them that will use their womanly assets to promote it but i mean come on the, the, the real men in the industry like myself and all of those that are watching us on on facebook live right now what is it that we can do to help with this, is there anything that we can do to help? To kind of go along with with Red's question as well. Well, wow, you you tap into several things there. Um, no, maybe you get okay. <laughs> well, let, let let me put it this way. Um, if if there's no demand, there's no audience for certain things, then whatever it is out there will will sit will sit will stop to exist. So what I'm, what I'm trying to say right there is like let's say using the top, one of the things that you addressed, uh, women that are in social media utilizing uh, their bodies to promote cigars. And if if you if if you want a change or or wanting that to dissipate or take a different form, then one way is for men to start clicking like and stop clicking follow to those type of accounts. Be the change that you want to see. So yes. Yes. if Thank there's you. no demand Thank for it, you. there's no audience for it. That's why it exists because they know there is an audience for it. So if there's an audience and there's following and there's liking, then you are promoting it. You are. And, and so then, and, and, and what are we going to do? Say, to other sectors of men that like that, that they cannot do that anymore? No, we're not here to judge. It, 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 the question like that was also said uh, also to uh, Lefty and Anastasia um, the other day. As a Zotogo movement, we're not here to judge anyone. We're not judge, we're not jury. We're no. not here about that. We are aware that that's going on and it happens. And we welcome everybody, mm -hmm. okay? Um, I can acknowledge you that you're, you're posting or whatever, fine. That's what you wanna do, that's, that's your prerogative and that's how, then that's perfect. More power to you, okay? Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that I have to agree with it. And if I don't agree with it, and that's not what my platform is about. I cannot promote you. I cannot share. Tag me 20 day, 20 times a day with any of your posts. I am not going to share it in my stories or share it on my posts or nothing like that because that we do not support it. We yeah. respect it. Yeah, I do respect that, but I don't see myself obligated to share that because I don't do it. So, so 
that I don't know if that in a way that answers your question. No, no, yeah. it, it's perfect. And I would like to challenge all the men out there, you know, something that I'm trying to do. And and I hope that both of you have seen this as I see, you know, your post and, and other women that, you know, post when they're talking about the cigar, you know, as beautiful as, as, as you both are and as other women are, I try to comment back to what it is that it's the cigar. How is that? Pairing? Wow. You know, be beautiful, beautiful pairing. And I try to bring that attention out. So that hopefully other men would would see and not just go, oh my God, you look so amazing. Well, yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, I, 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 in my opinion, every woman looks amazing. Yeah. But you, I mean, you, you, Cynthia, you've had some absolutely beautiful pairings, and that's yeah. what you're trying to promote, and that's what I want to focus on is what it is that you're trying to promote not just what a beautiful woman that you are but does that make yeah, sense because it's already a given yes. i yeah. say what I, what i've said to other people is like listen the moment you can you can have you can be up to here with with a shirt or whatever not showing no skin whatsoever the moment that a woman holds a cigar in her hands light it up and start smoking it just because of the fact that it is a woman doing that that right there automatically it's an eye catcher oh yeah it becomes sexy it becomes attractive right it, 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 and, and we as women cannot do anything about that because we are women right so yeah. And there's nothing that we can do to avoid those looks or whatever. So that by itself already, it's already attractive. So there's really no need to go above and beyond, uh, you know, to put uh, cigars and a picture in other parts of our body to promote it. And yeah. I love what you I love what you said because it's perfectly said. Because and I know I've gotten it, and I promise you that you've gotten it because people are like, Can you show a smoking cigar? When I get a message that says, Hey, can you show me yourself in your face smoking a cigar? I'm not gonna address that. And that's what I love about you is because my whole idealistic and you know in like graybeard and like you know leaf and grain I want to say is like we don't want to show you smoking our cigar we want to show the cigar we want to show the reason why behind the cigar mm -hmm. and that is one thing is like that I am so appreciative of you and that I love about you is because you want to go above and beyond than just smoking a cigar and your post eliminate, uh, illuminate, illuminate, yeah. yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Ill illuminate that. And like the first thing is like, that's one thing is like, yeah, we do have a sexiness, we do have an appeal for people smoking the cigar. Yeah, we want that. I mean, not want that, but we want more in depth of that. We want to be acknowledged that we do have an understanding that we do possess knowledge of that. And we want y'all to explore that, not just the fact that we're smoking a cigar. Does that make sense? I, I, I got to jump in and jump in here because this isn't the first time I've seen this comment. Joe, Joe said, great beard needs to show more beard. And, and I've, <laughs> I've had, had a couple of people that, that other people have said that maybe that's what I need to do to get the followers is just to have more cigar with my beard. Yeah. So and, I'm, and, so, you know, and I'm glad that you said that. And and, and listen, and, and it's it's tempting. It's mm -hmm. very very easy mm -hmm. to get distracted, lose focus yeah. on why you're doing what you're doing. Because yeah, there, there's certain there is this 
also this thing about, wow, you know, how many followers? Let's use an example. You have, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's a Cigar Snob uh, magazine, if I'm not mistaken. At, at the end of their magazine, they have like the, the top lounges or the top brands, something like that. And there's just a section that says the top cigar influencers mm -hmm. on social media, especially in Instagram, with my followers, right? Yeah. So that goes to my point again. If you give importance to that, yes. And there's gonna be women that are like, well, I wanna be number one. Or I want, yeah. I mean, I wanna be on that list, period. I wanna be on the top five or the top ten. I that's my goal. I wanna be there. I wanna be recognized as the number one influencer, a cigar influencer. What do I need to do? I've done the I've done it purposely with my post. And you can go back to my page and you can see that the, the, the posts that I've gotten to 300 likes, mm -hmm. okay, is because I have a dress or something that it's like a wow factor. It's like, wow, sexy, beautiful. The content is there, but it is that impact is we are all about what we see. We're very right. visual. The yeah. social media is really good to promote. Yes. But at the same time has put us where it's all about what we're seeing. Like, roll, like, swipe, blah, blah. We don't stop to read. Yeah. What is it that that person, why they made that post? Let's read what they're writing. What, what's the message? What they're, what, what they're trying to convey. Um, so, but then you have other outlets that reinforces that, mm -hmm. reinforces mm -hmm. that. So then you have people like, hey, I want to be there. So I barely, it's, it was two years in August 10. I had 3,000 and change followers right now. Mm -hmm. I remember there was one of my followers, they wrote to me and said, I, I'm still surprised how is that you, that your Instagram has not blown up with followers by now. Yeah. I, well, I can blow it up if I wanted to. Oh, I could do Please. that. Yes, <laughs> we could. We could. But exactly. it, there's no need for that. Look what just exactly. happened the other day on Sunday. I had the honor and the privilege to be interviewed and be at the professor on yes. that show. Yeah. And I don't have 10, oh, you're on mute, 80, 100,000 followers. It's not about that. It's that about you. what are you contributing to the industry? Yeah. Yes. Yes. What yes. are you giving back to your community to make yes. a change, to make a difference? Because yes. if it's all about just smoking a cigar and writing a review, that's great. That's yes. good. And there's, that's good. I write for magazines. I'm a, 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 a contributor writer for Homo Latino Magazine and for the Cigar Public official magazine that streamed out from Privada Cigar Club. There's outlets, there's opportunities for everybody to pursue whatever they want to pursue. Mm -hmm. yeah. But, you know, the number of followers is not 100% gonna determine what recognition you're gonna get or opportunities that are gonna come about your way in, in whichever industry you are. In this case, we're talking about the cigar industry. Mm -hmm. Right. It's not gonna determine that. Um, for some influencers, that number is it's important because mm -hmm. of the metrics, right? Yep. yep. Uh, okay. Because that's how they get paid to promote yeah. a product. Because these brands, whichever brand that uses that as a tool to um, market their product, obviously 
they're going to want to invest and pay money to a person that has 80 or 100,000 followers because there's going to be more views of their product than somebody has only two or two or 3,000. But in hindsight, you also have to look into the interaction. Though those followers are really interacting with that person. Yes. Are it's there, like are there, when they say that they're going to be somewhere, or they're gonna create an event, how many people do actually come out that are wanting to connect with that person and that they will make a change, a long-term change yeah. or effect. Yes. I, so I you, 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 said, you have said it perfectly because yeah. I have, like the amount of followers, I have over 3000 followers and I'm very appreciative of my followers, but I have that same amount that is blocked. So I could have well over 6,000 followers plus on my, on my page, but because I want it to be taken more serious because of the Sister of the Leaf movement, like how you're doing with in Puerto Rico and how we're doing again globally, I choose to blo block those people that only want to say, okay, why can't you post more pictures of you, you smoking cigars? Why can't you post more fishnets? And like, you know, the fishnets are fun and I know that it's sexy and everything, but I want the interact, interaction that is real, that is actually going to make a difference in this industry. And that is what I love and appreciate about what you're doing for the women in this industry. Because I, the ones that want us, to be taken serious, we want that. We crave that. I mean, it's easy for me to smoke, to take a picture of me smoking a cigar, but are you really going to look at what I'm saying and what I'm posting about that cigar or about that drink or about that pairing? And to me, that's crucial for me. And I think that the Sisters of the Leaf that are wanting that that's what we want we don't want to be looked at as like oh as a, and, I, and i hate to and it's the true term is as a puppet is we don't want to be looked at as a puppet but sadly that's kind of how we're looked at and and i think for for the women who take it serious and who are wanting to make that change in the industry we don't want that. We want to be taken serious. And it's hard to take it serious when you're going up against that, if that makes sense. I'd like to touch on a couple of points, you know, and, and, and this is from, from the, men, the men's side. And one, I want to, if I was wearing a hat, I'd, I would take the hat, my hat off to all the men that are commenting in, in the Facebook chat here. Because I'm seeing comments of excellent discussion. Exactly. This is creating the wrong perception of women. That, more we're more interested in what you smoke rather than, than than what you what you look like and every single one of the men that are on here are 100 percent back behind standing behind what both of you are saying <clears throat> and the other thing of to kind of bring out points of what both of you have talked about because how both of you carry yourself on this and how we carry ourselves on leaf and grain we're one of the few podcasts that can hold an audience for two plus hours we're going on two hours and 10 minutes right now on this and we've held audiences for three hours for four hours uh, and and we're talking about cigars and pairings and we get into discussions such as this we've gotten into discussions of, about mental health and men's issues and women's issues you know on, on all sides of that and we don't play those games of going in and and now it's a comedy hour we keep the discussion and our audiences are engaged throughout the entire time. You know, and you know, you, you both have talked about Red, you talked about how you have 3,000 followers, you know, and, and probably 3,000 people that are blocked. And I've seen what? some of the people, and we've had to kick a couple off of this show because they've gotten into lewd comments in, in, in the chat. I've got 2,000 followers, and I was so excited when I hit 2,000, and I have maybe 20 blocked 
to where women will come on and do, you know, make lewd comments or, you know, send me private messages of, hey, go click this link and go do this. I'm not about yeah. all of that. I'm on here to talk about, I'm not here to talk about cigars, pairings, whiskey, wine, coffee, tea, and I'll get in and talk about my faith, you know, my, my faith in God too. And if you want to talk about anything else that, that deviates from that in a negative manner, you're gone. Yeah. Just, just, just that quick. But I can't imagine what it's like for you, you know, for you as women, because I, I'm, I'm, I'm embarrassed from the representation, the, the, the large representation of, of the, the men and, you know, my gender and how they treat y'all. And my challenge for anybody that's watch, watching this is, men, we got to stop being in the background. We got to start stepping up and supporting our sisters and stop this type of interaction that you, that you, that you amazing ladies get because it's, it's undeserved. You guys don't deserve that. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and like the beautiful thing is like the sister of the leaf. And I'm going to say, I'm going to give a shout out to, you know, the good cigar, because that's where we had our first sister of the leaf movement. And it was exciting that it was here in Texas because anybody who knows, like, I love my state. I love everything about it. But like, you know, even at my home cigar lounge, I know, like when I go to my home lounge, I know that my brothers of the leaf are going to look out for me. They're not, they know my personality. And if a man comes up and says like rude and like things that I'm going to stand up for myself. And I love the fact that they try to let me handle it first. But when it comes to the point where it gets beyond that after three like you know three times I've warned a man then they come up and they back me and the beautiful thing about when we went to Little Elm like I felt safe going there because we talked about you need to feel safe going to a lounge and you know how's it going to be so I knew like when he when Al who owns that cigar and his wife is there with him she smokes cigars. She's with us in, I don't want to say the trenches, but that's kind of how it is. And he's like, I'm going to watch you till you get to your car. I'm going to have someone escort you till you get to your car and watch you leave. To me, as a woman, that is very important. Like, you know, I know if Graybeard's there, he's going to make sure that I get to where I need to be. And in a lot of experiences, a lot of my friends have done that. But sadly, there's those guys that are in the background, you know, that are kind of, you know, I'm hesitant and I'm kind of nervous about. And, you know, I do my fishnets because that's what I'm known for is my fishnet is I don't mind doing those, but there's a reason and a purpose, but also take the fact what I write, the articles that I publish and the fact that I can do what I can do take it serious. And I think that's exactly where you are. And that's where, you know, all the organizations that you're involved in is that's what we want for women. And, and I don't necessarily want to say it's an, you know, it's to be treated as an equal. And I think in the cigar industry, it's been a little bit, you know, because it wasn't until recently until and I don't know with you but here within the last couple of years it's been that shift that um you know that pivot that we've made and um and women have kind of like we we've, we've made our stand and um and I'm glad that we've been able to make a stand and I and I don't want to say like it's all about like the women and all that other stuff but I think it's important that we get recognized as equal and that we actually do know what we're talking about. 100%. Yep. 100%. Well, we're, we're here at, uh, at a quarter to nine, our time, uh, two hours and, and 
15 minutes or something like that. Um, got a couple of other questions that we've had, and I don't want to ignore, ignore them because we appreciate our audience so much. And we also want to be respectful to your time as well, you know, because I believe you're a, a, an hour, I I you're another hour behind us um, or ahead of us, whichever direction. <laughs> it's later for you. There'll be ten o'clock over here. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, it's it's later it's later for you. But but one of the questions that, that we got, which is which is interesting, it kind of goes back to to the rum, you know, with, with your experience and knowledge around that. What rum would you recommend to you know in Puerto Rican rum? What is, what is someone who's coming into Puerto Rican rum has never experienced it? What rum would you recommend that really distinguishes what Puerto Rico has to offer? Oh, wow. So um, now, right now, there's like, I would call it like the new generation of rums versus the classic. So you have Don Q, which is a classic. Uh, but uh, from the Don Q, I personally love the uh, cherry cast, the double cask with mm. a cherry cask finish okay yeah. um, it, i love that rum um they also have one that is a finish with vermouth a vermouth finish um Ooh. yeah those are my favorites but uh you also had the barrilito ronde barrilito um my for well for sipping and pairing with cigars uh the number uh, three and four stars. Um, okay. Yeah, definitely. Um, I've had also the Gran Reserva uh, rum from Don Q, but that is uh, quite expensive. <laughs> that one I am familiar with. Those are the benefits of hosting and putting together and uh, being part of events. Uh, yes. you, you get you know, to try these things, right? Um, but yeah, those are the two that I personally would recommend uh, that are local and have a long standing history of rum in Puerto Rico. Um, but then again, you have the new generation of rums, uh, new distilleries that have come up with excellent rums in the island. And there's uh, coming up with infused uh, rums. Um, so those are very interesting. You have Crab Island, it's one of them, where they're coffee infused and they have an orange infused uh, rum mm -hmm. and made in, in Vieques, on the island of Vieques. Um, you have, oh my goodness, uh, I think it's Ola Distilleria. Uh, they have this rum, it's a white rum, but it has some sweet notes to it uh, because of the barrels that they age that. But because the barrel has been used so many times, the coloring, it, the, the wood doesn't yield any coloring at all. Right. So that's one of the reasons why it's, it's clear. Um, so it's called artesano, rum artesano. It's a very good, excellent rum as well. So there's different. Um, what I would recommend is that when you get the opportunity to come to Puerto Rico, sign up for these tours. A lot of them offer tours of their distilleries and include rum tastings. Um, and also every year we have the Taste of Rum Festival. Ooh. That's a perfect opportunity. Ah, I need to go to Rum to of Puerto Rico. Rico. Yeah. yeah. Here you go. It's a festival and you get to try most of all the rums that there has that there is in Puerto Rico. You will find it all in one place and taste them all. So, sounds so like Leaf and Grain. Though. Sounds like Leaf and Grain needs to make a visit yeah. a couple of festivals down there. Yeah. yeah. We just need to come to Puerto Rico. Yeah. Puerto Rico. So they have that festival, uh, the Taste of Rum, um, but also coming up in November is the Puerto Rico Cotto Week. This year they will be celebrating, if I'm not mistaken, their fourth edition. They will be celebrating their fourth edition 
uh, Puerto Rico Cultural Week. So that's another opportunity uh, to try local uh, distilled spirits. Very nice. uh, there's also uh, venturing of whiskeys in Puerto Rico and also vodka. Oh, oh, vodka. Vodka. When you said the whiskeys, that really piqued my interest there. Yeah. So yeah, I was like whiskeys, and then she said vodka because yeah. I love vodka. Yes. So like I just maybe I just need to go to Puerto Rico for a year and just hang out. So there's another opportunity with the Puerto Rico Cultural Week to come and try uh spirits here in Puerto Rico as well during that week. Yep. So so, a so, lot of so, the things to do here in Puerto Rico. Drink, so, smoke, cigars, and eat. And of course, dance salsa. <laughs> oh, there we go. All right. So, so fi final question of the night is we, we, we got it. We got to bring it back around the house of, of how was your pairing? I like here, here was my thing. My pairing was like, I was not sure. I thought it would be really, really good. And like, and, and I'm gonna let Graybeard testify because I was looking for a like Karen Berger because she's very big with the Sister of the Leaf movement. She's a very dear good friend of, of ours. And um, I love all she's done for the moment. That's what I was looking for, for the Cameroon. But I couldn't find it because I haven't really organized my, um, cigars that well within the last couple months I'm gonna admit it and so I went to be with, with Viaje and I thought it would be good but it was phenomenal going from cigar to drink drink to cigar it was beautiful and like I was kind of a little bit nervous about it because it did have that like the kick at the first like what I said it's like whenever you have a closed foot it does have that power but I am super happy that um, I did what I did. And the later that you, like the second and the third, is you get that sweetness of that cigar. And it was so phenomenal with my martini that I'm just like, I was sad that it's my last cigar that I had from Viaje. <laughs> it, was, it was like perfection. Yeah. So that's how, that's how I would rate mine was it was perfection, and I'm so glad, uh, Cynthia, that you suggested that because I had never heard of it, and I was like, huh, I wonder how this is going to be, but it was something that I ex enjoyed extremely, and I could see myself drinking that because you know in Texas, it doesn't get fall until the last weekend of October. So this is beautiful for a summer drink. Like I could just drink it by itself. Very refreshing. It with, yeah, it, very refreshing. Preparing it with the Viaje Harvest Tang was perfection. So that's that's how I viewed mine. It was it was perfection. It it did more than just benefit friends with benefits. It took it to that marriage. So it was friends with benefits, but it took it to the full blown marriage. All right. So, so Cynthia, how was your pairing? Yeah, uh, I would say the same. Um, of course, mine it's a uh, it's a, a medium to full. Um, having that San Andres as a wrapper, um, mm -hmm. it has some peppery. So obviously, mm -hmm. I've smoked my cigar several times already, mm -hmm. um, and I've tried it with rums. I've tried it with bourbon. I've tried it with coffee, <laughs> with cream. And I've also tried it with the lychee martinis. This time I had a pear martini. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, it just allows me to freshen up, of course, because it's hot. Um, and second, it doesn't, it doesn't compete with a cigar. Right. I'm able to go back and forth with it. Um, it's not a battle on my palate at all. And at the same time, I don't know if that happened to you, but in a way, it it it, it kind of a little bit cleanses my palate, if it makes mm -hmm. any sense. Oh, no, yeah. it does. And at hundred percent, because like when I, I start uh, again. Yeah, because like when you eat the fruit, 
and I and I know that Greybeard didn't get to have this, but like when you eat it and have it from the cigar, so that kind of brings up another point. It was like a perfect matrimony. My, mine, mine was the same. Mine was very balanced all the way throughout. Neither competed with each other, and and you you said it perfectly, Cynthia. It every time. I was, you know, my palate was cleansed so that there was there was no there was no overpowering either direction going from cigar to the drink. Yeah. Drink to the cigar. I I made a I made enough and, and I don't know if you saw, I mean I refilled my glass like three times. <laughs> so three three times. I have enjoyed yeah. this and I want to thank you so much for the recommendation. Thank you. I mean, what an what an incredible drink! I've I, I have learned so much about you and about what it is that you're trying to do and what the direction that you want. You know that that all of the sisters of, of the 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 social you know global movement and, and let, let's call it what it is because it really needs to be that. Um, but much you know. So, so much respect for you and yeah. everything that, that you're doing for the industry as a whole, all sides of the industry from, from cocktails to, to cigars. And, and then what our passion is, is on the pairings of them, but especially so much respect for everything that you're doing for, for the, for the sisters and, and along that, this has been, this has been a very enjoyable time and thank you so much for for jumping on with us it has been a pleasure thank you the pleasure has been all mine thank you so much for bringing me and having the opportunity to share my story with your audience um i always also get uh, um when we're sharing our stories we i also get from the ones that are interviewing me learning from you guys as well so it's a constant learning every day. So um, it, it goes both ways. So I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Yes, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> okay, well, thank you everybody who's, who's jumped on. Um, and on the 21st, we have another amazing guest, um, Kathy, who is the founder of the Cigar Box Marketing Group. It's going to be on, and we're going to be talking a lot about a different side of the business, the actual business side, and talking about what we can do as business owners to promote. And there, there's things that we miss because we're we're focused on our cigars or we're focused on pairings. There's a lot about what we need to do. We need to think about it on the business side of how to promote it from a marketing standpoint. So she's going to jump on with us on the 21st. And she is going to be talking about our website and Leaf and Grain and what we're doing. And she's analyzing it. She's got her team analyzing everything that we're doing from social media to our website and talking about what it is that we can do ourselves as Leaf and Grain Society to to promote. So you're going to get to see exactly what she does firsthand. Um, next week's challenge, uh, we're going to be doing juice. Juice. Yeah. Juice with cigars. I know that that it, it kind of, and I love the fact that Cynthia brought up about like oranges and limes and how it changes the fact of it when you bring it in. So I am super excited about like the juice challenge and um and I'm sitting here thinking, oh my goodness, to me, that's going to be like the most difficult because I'm not going to lie. I'm a mama of five, even though my children are grown majority, four out of five of my children are grown. I still have a lot that lives with me. So I'm excited to take it for a different perspective. And um, my adult beverage is my skate time. So I think that the juice is going to um, is going to be interesting, and I'm excited about it. I, I will give everybody a, a hint, and I want everybody to step up to the challenge. All of our audience members step up to the challenge and pair it with the juice as well. Yeah. 
do not try to find a complementary pairing because you find a complementary pairing, your cigar is going to be overpowered. Go for either a contrast pairing or better yet, a balanced pairing. So find something that's going to balance out to where each of each other are going to you're not going to because you're not going to change the notes of an orange juice you're not going to change the notes of an apple juice from the cigar but you can find it to where it's a nice balance to where neither overpower each other so that's what you're going to want to look for in this type of pairing yeah so that that's next week um do we have a guest for next week red you you were so secretive no, not for next week, unless someone comes back and says, hey, I can do it next week, then it will be, and we'll post about that, but I think it's going to be like back to the basics of the Twisted Pear, where we uh, break down ju juice and a cigar, and I think it kind of needs to be brought that way, that because sense. a lot of us don't do it, and I think we need to do it more. Which brings us to a, a great time to, to close this out. And as we always close it out, we say thank you, everybody. We love you. Appreciate you. Could not be here without you. And until the next time, explore the pairings. There's something for everyone. Thank you all. Bye. 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 Bye everybody. Buenas noches. Buenas noches. Hasta luego. <laughs> not even going to try. <laughs> I'll get there. I'll get there.